People are unable to use water for anything. That means no showering, no shaving, no morning coffee, and no idea just how much longer it'll take. Right now, West Virginia Governor Earl Ray Tomlin has declared a state of emergency for nine counties surrounding Charleston, West Virginia. Schools and businesses have been closed, and the 300,000 or so residents that have been affected by this spill are told not to drink the water, not even to wash their hands with it. We have a baby, and so we're trying to find water for him for formula. Um, it really doesn't matter for us. We're just trying to make sure he has what he needs. There you go. Charleston, West Virginia area residents knew something was wrong when their water started smelling like licorice. Pretty stressful with the kids and can't hardly cook, you know. Stephanie Keaton and thousands of others flocked to water distribution sites all across the area since they can't turn on the tap at home. The source of the problem that's closed restaurants and schools is 4-methylcyclohexane methanol, a chemical that's used in coal processing. It's an oily substance that some say smells like licorice. It leaked from a 48,000-gallon tank at Freedom Industries Chemical Storage Facility on the Elk River. About a mile downriver is the West Virginia American Water Company, which supplies nine counties and some 300,000 people, whose health may now be at risk. You know, I don't think anyone had any clue what, what was going on. Um, we just knew that there was a leak at Freedom um, and that we, residents weren't supposed to use water at all. Um, of course, having reported this uh, and living in Charleston, we were just as affected as anyone else. So the first three days uh, after the spill, people were coming to work unshowered, um, basically cleaning up as best you could with like baby wipes or, or some sort of like, you know, whatever towels you had laying around that you could clean yourself with. Um, so, you, I mean, bottled water, bar of soap, and a washcloth was about the best you could do. Right. Well, the, what the chemical spill taught us is, is that water is extremely valuable, and we just often take it for granted because we have so much of it. Uh, you know, if you go out west, they have droughts on a regular enough basis that they, uh, they understand the value of their water. It was pointed out to me um, by a visiting scientist, uh, and he has spent a lot of time out west and here back east, and he's like, the one thing that you notice when you go out west is that every hotel, every place you go to has fountains, has water fountains, and when you come east, nobody does. And the reason out west is, is that they want to show you that they have water, and they have water in abundance. It's a, it's a very deep psychological thing. What happens here, where we get a lot of rainfall, we take water for granted. We're rarely under water stress in terms of, of water quantity stress. Um, we just have so much water, and that water has a dilution value to it, so it, it dilutes our pollution. And, but what we saw from that chemical spill is that when we don't have water, it creates a serious, serious situation, and not one that's just, oh, environmentalists care about it. Everybody cares about it. Citizens care about it. Businesses care about it. It's wildly important to us, and we see it when we're, we, we realize it when it's gone. In short, it was a mess. That's, it was a mess. Uh, we, I was lucky. I had water. But that meant I was sort of ground zero for people who needed showers, who needed to fill up water bottles, uh, for people who just kind of wanted a place where they could get away from the no water situation wherever they were and feel a sense of normalcy for a, for a little bit. Um, so I, I was very, very fortunate. But our staff, our reporters, uh, the, you know, their families, many of them, uh, I think nearly all of them, they lived in apartments and in homes where they didn't have water either. So this was a story that they were covering, but they were also experiencing firsthand. And, and that was really important because I think it added an additional sense of urgency to the way the story was reported, not just in, in our newsroom, but in all of the newsrooms in the Kanawha Valley and the nine affected counties. Uh, I think that any time you have media affected directly by what they're reporting, 
it adds a sense of immediacy and urgency to their job and, and the way they go about doing their job. The second thing it taught us is that we have to be protective of that water. I mean, we, we have to be protective of that water because so many, so much of our state, so much of, of our businesses, our economy depends on it. It is not just people who care about the environment. They care about the environment because of its value to the people that live here. So we have to be protective of it. And that doesn't mean saying nothing can happen around water because, again, there's so much water that's not, not even close to possible. But we do have to be vigilant um, when it comes to being protective of it.